The BRN3000 is a semi-automated Brunel hardness tester. One of the most important features of this particular Brunel tester is that there's a filer system for measuring the indents. So instead of having to make the indent and then going to a outside or an external measurement source, it's built in. This is a very nice feature of the BRN3000. The BRN3000 Brunel tester operation. By turning on the power switch, we'll see the parameters that the default parameters will be listed in the LCD screen. If we wanted to change any of those parameters, what we do is we come in here and press the tab A key. So this will allow us to change the tester force. Right now it's set for a 10 millimeter ball and 3,000 gram load. Let's scroll over and make that a thousand gram load. Press OK. Now if we press OK on this screen, what we can do is we can change some of the other parameters down at the bottom such as the uh, date stamp. We can also change the conversion scale change the light intensity and the dwell time. Right now that's set for 15 seconds. Let's go ahead and change that to 5 seconds. And press enter. So at this point what we want to do is we want to make sure that our filer system is calibrated to zero. And the way the filer system works is this left knob will move the filers back and forth. The right knob will change the distance between them. So what we want to do is we want to bring those so that they're just barely touching. And once they're touching, what we want to do is we want to press the CLR-D, clearing the diagonal. And you see here, that sets that to zero. And we also want to, when we first turn the unit on, is to clear the force. Right now the force is reading zero, but we want to make sure that that is zeroed as well. So now what we'll do while we have the optic system in place, is we'll go ahead and find a location where we want to make our indent. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and rotate the indenter in place. Now we always want to make sure that this indenter is facing forward before we apply any load to it, otherwise we could damage the internal components of the system here. Note that we have about three quarters, about an inch between the sample and the indenter. That's where the focus is going to be. So let's go ahead and raise up the stage. And as we apply the force, we'll see that a force will be showing here. So depending on what the major force is, the uh, primary force will be different. But for the 1,000 gram load that we'll have, that will be approximately 90. So we'll go ahead and increase that force up to near 90 and then we'll hear a chirp. At this point we have an arrow is flashing. This is applying the major load to the specimen. Once that's reached, the dwell time will count down to zero. And then after that's complete, we'll flash again showing that the indenter is being raised, and that second chirp shows that the load has been removed. So at this point, let's go ahead and lower the stage a bit. Go ahead and rotate the optics back into place. Now what we want to do is we want to raise or lower the table here so that the indent is in focus. So once that's in focus, now what we want to do is we want to use the left filer to find the left edge of the indent, and then we'll use the right filer to move the second filer to the outside of the right part of the indent. And once we've done that, then we'll go ahead and accept that measurement with this button here. Now we also have to measure the diagonal in the 90 degrees from here. So we'll go ahead and rotate the filer, find the corners of our indent again, and press the accept button. This will now show or display our hardness value. 
We wanted to print the values you know, as we've made multiple indents. We go to the PRT button here. So by pressing that, you can see or hear that the printer is printing out the values for the measurements that we've made. We can also go into tab B here, and this will show the results that of the indents that we've made. We can also save up to five sets of data containing 20 readings each by pressing the Save button. That way if we have multiple samples, we can save the data for each particular sample. And once we're done, before we turn off the unit, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we press the Exit button. This will disable the CPU. Now we can turn out the system. The BRN3000 control panel. When we first turn on the unit, the LCD display will show on the bottom here the default values. And we can change these, for example, if we want to change the load and the indenter size, we can go into this tab A key. We press that, we see this screen comes up. So here by scrolling down, we can change the size of our indenter. And scrolling to the right, we can change the load. In this case, let's go ahead and select the 1,000 kilogram load. When we press OK, we go back to the main screen, and now we can see that we have a setting for a 1,000 kilogram load and a 10 millimeter ball. We can also change these parameters here from this screen by pressing the OK button. You see right now the cursor's flashing on year, so we can change this date stamp here, or we can scroll over we can change our conversion factor. So right now, if we were to print our values, we would get a Brunel testing number as well as a Rockwell C testing number. And we can go over to light and dwell time. So let's say let's change that to 10. So after we've done that, we press OK to get out of that screen. And at this point, the next step is to make sure our filers are calibrated to zero. You can see up here they are set to zero, but once we bring those filers so that they're barely touching, if there's a value there, we need to clear or re-zero that. So to do that, we would go into the CLR-D, or the clear diagonal, press that, and that makes those numbers now zero. Likewise with the force, we may need to re-zero the force as well. Right now it's reading zero, but to do that, what we would need to do is hit the clear force. Now when we're making our measurement, if we need more light or less light, we don't have to go back into the main screen to do it. We can just press the L plus, see that increases the light intensity, or L minus, that decreases the light intensity. Now after we've made a measurement, if the measurement is not acceptable, we can actually delete that by pressing the delete key. And if all looks good, what we can do is we can actually save the information. So if we go into the tab B screen, what we see is a result screen here, and we can put up to 20 results in five different screens. So if we have five different samples, we could take 20 measurements for each sample and save that. And we can also print the results as well. So let's get out of this screen. So if we had a final result that we wanted to print, we would press the PRT key. Now before we exit, or turn off the system, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we exit. This will close down the CPU, and then we can go ahead and shut the power off. 